Hey you guys and welcome to our quick video here on section 3.3, um, the section of the book called Fallacies of Weak Induction. Again, we're not so much worried with the categories as we are individual fallacies. Um, I'm going to start with the first one here just real briefly called Appeal to Unqualified Authority. Uh, the cited authority or witness lacks credibility. Let me give you a great example, you'll never forget this. Right here you're looking at a polygraph, which is a lie detector test, that was administered to a plant. And there was an FBI agent who was the world's expert, or one of them anyway, on administering lie detectors. And I don't know how he had the idea to do this, but he hooked up a plant to a lie detector and then proceeded to ask it a series of questions. He then claimed that he got um, legitimate responses here concerning what was going on in the room. Uh, on this basis, he concluded that there are that that plants, in fact, uh, are sentient, and he published a, a study about this, a small book or a pamphlet, um, and he was completely wrong. Now he may be an expert on lie detectors, but he's not on plants, so he doesn't understand their their chemical properties and what might be going on on the surface of a plant and so forth that would give false readings. Um, so be careful when someone is cited in an authority they may it may be fine may be a legitimate use but make sure that they are an authority in what you are talking about. Uh, another quick example there was the Ken Ham Bill Nye debate and uh, in, during this debate um, Ken Ham cited or presented a number of scientists who were young earth creationists. Um, now this, this was a problem because none of those scientists were experts in evolution and so they were not capable of commenting on, they weren't qualified to talk about the, the length of time under which evolution would have to occur or the development of DNA would have to occur given um, the, uh, the, the genomes and so forth and the change in gene frequencies. So um, he was attempting to bolster his argument, but in fact he subverted it. Um, so there's a lot of good Christian commentary on that online. So just be careful when someone is citing an authority, make sure that authority is, is an expert in what they're doing what they're talking about. Okay, now this brings us to um, the monster of the week, 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 week. And this monster represents the argument from ignorance fallacy. Here we go. monster this week is or are aliens. That's right, aliens, extraterrestrials from another planet. What does this have to do with anything? Well, it has everything to do with the appeal to ignorance, or otherwise known as the argument from ignorance. And the way the argument usually works is someone says, gosh, I don't know, therefore, right, something. So, uh, for example, an argument from ignorance would be, um, if you've ever watched Ancient Aliens, I'm a huge fan of that show, by the way, um, you would know that they make the following argument. Gosh, um, I don't know how an ancient civilization would move this big rock, therefore, aliens must have done it. Um, and this is a very common ploy. Um, they will say, gosh, I don't know what this is in a particular artifact of art, but it must therefore be aliens. Okay, so let's let's look at some examples of this, right? Um, okay, so classic example. If take a look at the, each of these blocks in the pyramid and note that they're several tons each, right? I mean, there's no way one person could move any one of these blocks, let alone cut it on their own. Um, and it seems difficult for someone who doesn't know about Egyptian archaeology or ancient stonemasonry, um, 
to figure out how that that thing would be built, right? It's just very difficult to know. Um, but but that doesn't mean that then we can conclude aliens did it, right? Oh gosh, we don't know how this was done. They must have had alien help. No, that's not a valid inference. As it turns out, with the exception of how they turn the corners near the top, we have a pretty good understanding of how um, these stones would be moved. Um, there are a couple of ways to do it. Um, another example would be this artifact here in the bottom left, in ancient aliens, they say, oh gosh, you know, this looks like a flying machine. What else could it be? I don't know. So it must be a, an ancient rendering of a flying machine. Well, no, if you talk to archeologists who dug this stuff up, they'll tell you that this is a stylized fish and there are lots and lots and lots of them and they look real similar and in fact you could even relate some features of the fish to these anatomical stylings. Um, another example, they'll, they'll pull out an old ancient carving and go, gosh, doesn't that look like um, a, a spacesuit? I, I don't know what else it could be, so it must be a spacesuit. Well, no, right? I mean, there's a narrative here about who this is and what's going on. And you can't just say, well, I don't know, so aliens must have done it. But oftentimes in ancient aliens, shows that's exactly the argument and it is literally i don't know what this is therefore aliens um so uh, oh you know what let me move this you guys so it's so um that's uh, now i love the show so don't send me hate mail but it's just the truth um okay it's an appeal to ignorance next up hasty generalization uh, this is a fallacy that affects inductive generalizations how do we what does that mean here's what it means um I don't like Indian food. I ate it once. Well, maybe you did eat Indian food once, okay? And, and, and so you didn't like that Indian food, but you cannot then conclude, you cannot generalize that you don't like all Indian food. It may just be that you were eating Southern Indian food and you love Northern Indian food, or you just don't like that particular chef, right? I mean, people make food all the time that you don't like to eat. It doesn't mean you don't like that particular kind of food. Um, so usually there's some problem. You haven't looked at enough examples of something and then you generalize over, over the whole for hasty generalization. Okay, uh, remember I'll go quickly through these. You can stop, rewind, pause, and go back as you see fit. Next up, false cause. For false cause I have a little icon here. I stole this from um, Thou Shall Not Commit Logical Fallacies. You'll see a snowflake here and a little pirate skull. Why? Here's why. Um, uh, a false cause is an incorrect claim that a real or imagined relationship is causal. So here we have a chart uh, which pots, spots uh, global average temperature and compares it to the number of pirates in the world. And you'll note that global temperature has been increasing as the number of pirates in the world reduces, right? So the idea is that pirates are keeping the the earth cold um, and as we lose pirates we are gaining in global temperature well that's clearly false right but this happens quite often people will look at statistical relationships and say oh well look as this one goes up this one goes down so there must be some type of relationship no not necessarily not necessarily at all okay another type of false cause fallacy is called post hoc ergo propter hoc and this is handled a little bit later in the exercises but the general idea is that just because one event comes before another it doesn't mean that the first event causes the second. Let me give you a classic example. Um, I have family who believe quite devoutly in the power of rose water and they'll say oh you got a cold take some rose water drink some rose water. Oh, you're not feeling, you've got the flu, drink some rose water, right? Broken arm, drink some rose water. And, um, and, and they're convinced because what they'll do is they'll drink rose water avidly for a few days and then they start to feel better. And they go, well, look, obviously I, I drink the rose water and then I feel better. But that's a fallacy, right? Because we know that illnesses go up and down and that you will under normal circumstances recover from an illness within a suitable period of time. So just because you get better after drinking rose water, it doesn't mean that that rose water made you feel better, right? Um, 
just because my arm eventually heals from being broken, it doesn't mean that's due to the healing powers of the rose water. Right? So, so keep in mind, it, it's a fancy name. It just means, look, just because something comes after something else, it doesn't mean that, um, that it is because of the second. Okay? All right. Um, another type of fallacy from causation is called Oberer simplified cause. Um, and usually what happens is here, you have a multitude of causes that are responsible for a certain effect, but the arguer is going to select just one of those causes and then say, well, that represents all of it as if it were the sole cause. So let's take an example here. And this is a, a very difficult image. It should, um, everyone should, should be familiar with this. This is from the Columbine tragedy um, where students, you know, obviously, um, uh, killed a number of other students using automatic weapons. Um, a real tragedy in, in our nation's history, and, and obviously there have been shootings since. When there are these types of shootings, um, some people on both sides actually are, are very fond of saying, aha, well, uh, the, the culprit here are the automatic weapons alone, right? If we didn't have these automatic weapons, then this wouldn't happen. Um, and then people on the other side will say, oh, no, 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 it's not the automatic weapon, right? It's, it's someone's mental health. And if they had better mental health, then, then none of this would happen. Each side want to pick one thing and say that this is the cause. Oh, it is the guns. Oh, it is their mental health. But they exclude the idea that it is both of them. So obviously it's a concurrent cause, right? There are a number of things that cause this. The guns obviously do. But so does the mental health, or lack thereof, of the actors. And so when you are looking at an issue that's very complex, it's important to say, my gosh, is there more than one cause here? Now, that's not to say that greater gun regulation wouldn't result in, in you know, fewer number of tragedies. It's not to say that more funding going into mental health care wouldn't result in less tragedies. It's just pointing out the claim that we don't want to oversimplify the causes in, a, in an argument. Okay, let's see, let's go back. Okay, here we are. Uh, next up, gambler's fallacy. Um, this is an easy one to remember. Um, and it's, I, I don't know how heavily we'll test it, but you may get a test on it. Here we go. Um, the conclusion of an argument depends on the supposition that independent events in a game of chance are causally related. What does that mean? Every time you go into a casino um, and you see a roulette wheel, you'll see a list of, of what it has done, you know, in the last 20 turns or something, right? And it'll say red, black, red, black, black 13, black whatever. And, and people look at this list and they say, oh, well, it's already hit on red two times in a row. So obviously, the next time it's going to be black. Well, no, that's, that's not obvious at all. Um, it, each spin of the wheel is an independent event and has nothing to do with what was going on in the first place, right? Uh, a great example of this was um, in Monte Carlo um, in, in 1913 on August the 18th. They were playing roulette. And that wheel, no joke, hit black 26 times in a row and uh, it made a killing for uh, the casino because people thought, okay, well, this thing's got to hit red. So people were just betting big on red. There's no reason to think that it would. Um, uh, sometimes people do this with lottery numbers. They go, well, they picked 16 last time. 16 was a big hit. So this time it's not going to be 16. No, it, 16 could show up every time. Each event is, is separate and distinct from one another. Okay, slippery slope. This is kind of a false cause argument. The book seems to group it in there, so we'll, we'll go with it. Um, in a slippery slope, notice the guy here on the little slippery slope. Ah! Um, the conclusion of an argument rests on a chain reaction for which there's insufficient reason to think it will, that this reaction will take place. What does it mean? Here, let me give you an example. If we allow same-sex marriage, then people are going to start smoking crack in the streets. Okay, well, how would that work? Well, we allow same-sex marriage, so morality starts to go lower, so people start to smoke pot, then people start doing crack, then people start doing heroin, then people start doing crack in the street, something like that. Well, no, right? I mean, that, that's a slippery slope, but 
you will hear this argument made by people who are opposed to same-sex marriage and they think it's valid. They say, no, look, unless you want people smoking crack, you should allow same-sex marriage. When in reality, there are so many independent events that would have to occur in the meantime, by no means does um, the, the um, recognition of same-sex marriage imply the use of crack. It's not even close, right? But that would be an example of, of that type of argument fallacy. Okay, weak analogy. Here we go. The analogy is not strong enough to support the conclusion. Just because one argument resembles another doesn't mean that cats can fly in space. That's a great way to put it, right? So uh, I will save an example of this for the video exercise. You have one in your, um, in your exercise. It, it goes something like this. Look, uh, just because, just as a mechanic doesn't have a duty to stop and, and help someone on the side of the road, a doctor doesn't have a duty to stop and help someone on the sidewalk who's having a heart attack or something like that. Well, um, look, no, those are not analogous because the role of a physician is very different than the role of a, of a mechanic. And that's due, of course, to the Hippocratic Oath, and it may also have to do with the value that we put on human life as opposed to the value that we put on cars, right? So anytime someone is making an analogy between two things, make sure that that, that, that analogy is strong enough to hold up. Okay. That does it for our, our, our video here. Just a short one. Um, remember, next week is going to be a little bit bigger. So uh, I will see you guys then. Good job.